Good morning everyone, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. This is March the 21st and we're looking at Luke chapter 11. And the verse that's caught my attention today for my password is verse 1. I'll read it for you. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. There was a, a feeling amongst this particular disciple and others perhaps too, that they really needed to understand prayer better. They needed to know how to say prayer better. They needed to pray with greater intelligence for the days in which they lived. And so they come to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, teach us to pray because John the Baptist teaches his disciples how to pray. The Lord Jesus, you would have thought, would bring an absolutely, totally new form of prayer for the disciples, but interestingly, he doesn't do that. He goes straight back to the oldest prayer, which we think probably uh, might have even been prayed by Abraham um, at the tomb of Sarah. He goes back to the Jewish Kaddish, which is the funeral prayer. And he begins, uh, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth, so as in, sorry, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now the prayer that Luke records here is a slightly modified version of what we're normally used to, which we find in Matthew's Gospel. And it's a prayer for the coming kingdom. It's Jewish in its orientation. And the Jews used to pray that they might be alive when the kingdom dawns. You see, a lot of Jews didn't really understand about the resurrection. They believed that um, if the kingdom came, they wanted to be alive when it came. Um, of course, Paul explains to the Christians later that actually, if we die as Christians, we don't miss out on the coming kingdom. We just are going to be resurrected at the rapture before the kingdom comes. So Christians don't miss out on anything at all. But the Lord Jesus brings them this wonderful prayer. He adds a number of things to it. Forgive us of our sins. And it's on the basis of the fact that under the law, they're forgiven if they forgive their brethren. He also adds the extra part, give us today our daily bread. The, these aspects of this prayer link it very much to the coming kingdom and also link it very much to the time of the tribulation period. We need to understand that the tribulation period was something that in God's timing was going to occur straight away. It's only the fact that after the cross God began a new thing, an interregnum, in which he um, started the church, in which he will bring the church finally to conclusion and rapture us all to heaven. But if it wasn't for the church, then the tribulation would have been happening immediately after this, and the kingdom would have followed immediately after that. So the prayer is very definitely Jewish. It's Jewish in origin, Jewish in feeling, and it's all about the coming kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God bless you. Great to talk to you and catch up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.